What's going on guys? Shane here. Fancy Anomaly. Today we're talking about training in Southpaw as an Orthodox fighter or vice versa. We just finished up filming our fighttips.com courses, Fancy Anomaly's MMA IQ Roadmap. You guys are going to freaking love this thing. And then my hybrid striking course. And we were talking a lot about training in Southpaw, when you should do it, why you should do it, why you shouldn't do it, because you may develop some bad habits. So we're going to discuss uh, some of those points today and why we believe that you should be training at a certain point in your martial arts journey. Let's take a look. All right, training in Southpaw or training in the opposite stance that you've been training, do you think it's going to become the norm? Do you think it's the future of combat sports? I think it is. I think you didn't see as many people doing it 10 years ago as you do now, um, especially in the lower weight classes, at least in MMA. Uh, more and more people are starting to do it, so I feel like it's kind of the next step in the evolution. Not everyone's going to do it, but more and more people will. Exactly. I think you hit the, the nail on the head right there. Not everyone's going to do it, but I do think it's important that you train it at least and you're familiarized with it because you're going to put yourself in a Southpaw shoes or in a mirrored fighter shoes and you're going to know how and what they're looking for. And also there's going to be times where just in the chaos of a fight, you find yourself in a switch stance and it may be more optimal for you to fire off from there rather than having to pivot or reset and get back into your conventional stance. All right, let's first talk about when you should do this in your martial arts journey, in your career, when should you get into doing it? I think I want to start off by saying that if you're just getting started, I don't think that you should train with your lead hand dominant. Like I don't think if you're right-handed, you should stand with your right foot and your right hand in the front. Mm -hmm. I know that goes against Jeet Kune Do, um, and then maybe like Taekwondo and wrestling, right? Some wrestlers yeah. stand with the lead leg dominant. Yeah, most guys who wrestle will start off training, like if I'm right-handed, I'm going to start off in what would be a southpaw stance, but with that right leg up mm -hmm. front. So I think actually in the wrestler's case, if they're getting into striking, if they're a really proficient wrestler, since they've been standing this way pretty much their whole life in, yeah. in their training, I think it kind of makes sense for them to start off with their striking that way. Mm -hmm. But I tend to agree with you in terms of if you're brand new, you know, clean slate, if you're just hopping into training martial arts, then keeping that rear hand in the back at least seems more natural to me. Yeah, and the reason being is because I think it'll turn a lot of people into a one-handed fighter, right? So if I'm if I'm right-handed and we're squared off and we're staying, we're we're fighting here, what's going to happen is I'm going to be throwing this hand because it's the closer one to you. I feel more comfortable with it. I feel like I have more dexterity, control, and power with this one. And even now, like personally, even though I've been training Southpaw for years now, I don't feel 100% confident with my left hand straight. Like even like the impact, I feel like my wrist isn't weak. I feel like the mechanics aren't perfect yet. Mm -hmm. And if I don't feel that this hand that's further away from him even has enough power to match this one, then I'm not going to throw this one. I'm going to become a one-handed fighter and I'm just going to be using this one. And I don't think that's wise for, for anyone to do, especially from the start. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, so... When, when then does a fighter start to practice the switch stance? I think, you know, if I were to do it all again, I would start practicing it a little bit sooner, but not from the get-go, like you said. Mm. So I would probably get proficient at, you know, finding my appropriate footwork, finding my appropriate balance with my regular stance, uh, getting all the major straight punches down, getting the defense kind of down, at least uh, the major fundamentals down. Fundamentals. And then once those are good, we can keep refining those and keep improving, and keep adding to that. But then I think that I would start maybe working on the bag, you know, as a sound ball. Just the same thing, like work on the balance, work on that defense, and work on getting those punches down. Because as you mentioned, it's it's like about muscle memory, right? Like for the first time, if you start training southpaw, if you've been orthodox for years, it feels really weird to throw the straight. It feels yeah. really weird to throw the kick with the leg in the back. And that's just like your muscles aren't used to doing it. So I feel like kind of training that muscle memory after you've already got it down for your regular stance, I feel like that's a good time to start. Yeah, I think once you've mastered the fundamentals, like I, I always believe you can improve upon things and bad habits will form and you always have to correct those. But if you're going to be practicing the switch stance, I think it's most important that you're able to coach yourself and recognize flaws mm -hmm. that you're making, right? Like, because when I'm, when I'm standing in orthodox, I'm, I'm still coaching myself in my head. Like I'm making sure that I'm sitting down on my rear leg. I'm making sure that the, my, my retraction of my punch is correct, that the opposite hand up, is up. And then when I go to southpaw, all of those same cues, I have to remind myself that I'm doing it. Yeah. And I feel something wrong. And I'm like, what, what, what is wrong here? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's too much weight in my lead leg. And then I got to pull that back. So up until you've gotten to that point, I, I don't want you to train in Southpaw because then you're just going to develop bad habits. There. Yeah, and that makes complete sense what you said about coaching yourself because I've noticed when I started training Southpaw more because I've been doing orthodox for a long time, I feel like my left hand placement in terms of just keeping it high 
is almost better than my right side because uh-huh. I've been coaching myself like, hey, make sure you have good position and southpaw, make sure everything's good. And this hand is just kind of glued here right uh-huh. over my eyebrows. So um, I do like that aspect of mastering that fundamentals and then being able to coach yourself on that southpaw side. Yeah. The other thing that I really like, let's let's get into the why you should start to train southpaw or just the opposite stance that you've been training. One thing that my coach did, my boxing coach back in Philadelphia, was he would say that I would push my cross a lot. And I didn't even know what that meant at the time, but he said like there was no pop on it. So what he had me do was stand in a southpaw stance on the bag and I would just have to throw right hand jabs over and over and over again. He'd have me do at least a hundred of them. Then I would go back to orthodox and then I would start throwing it and it would pop like a jab more. So it's just kind of developing the muscles evenly on both sides. Like we're throwing, what, thousands of jabs uh, a day, a week, you know, and, and that's just constantly developing this muscle. And I feel like my shoulder, my left shoulder is more developed than my right shoulder just from the, the sheer amount of volume that I'm throwing with each punch. So evening out both sides of the body, I think, is super important. Even if you're just doing that, even if you're just picking one technique, right, you're not just just as dedicating an entire round on the heavy bag or sparring, you're just going to pick one technique, the jab, and you're mm-hmm. just going to stand in that southpaw stance and just rep it over and over and over again. Yeah, And that's perfect, not just for southpaw, but orthodox as well. If you're not doing that, mm-hmm. uh, my coach Adam Larry, he made me do this in front of a boxing, uh, just a bag, just hitting the bag over and over, just going my liver shot with the left hand. Like, mm-hmm. let's, let's refine that, let's do it over and over. And then they're, they're after, you know, a few hundred of them, you get that feeling down like, oh, this is how I should be throwing it. Uh-huh. This is where I make the best connection. This is this is how I get most power on it. And you know, you just gotta apply that to just your opposite side, your southpaw side. So that's a really valid point. Okay. So the the other reasons of why we should do it, like like you mentioned, there's there's way more fighters nowadays. I know you mentioned uh, off camera TJ Dillashaw and Bud Crawford, Terrence Crawford, two yeah. great examples and two uh, very different examples of how they're able to switch their stance. TJ does it more so in the middle of a combo, in the pocket, switches from ortho to south, back and forth, and then Bud will dedicate entire rounds to being orthodox, and then all of a sudden it comes out of southpaw, and now you feel like you're fighting against two different guys. Yeah, and the crazy thing is these two guys are champions, or were champions, you know, they're they're at the very top, at the pinnacle of the sport, and they're beating the top guys doing these, and they're doing it in a different style. So, like you said, I know TJ kind of likes to switch in, he'll throw more of like this switch from the jab, yeah. and keep this outside angle here. Or same if he, if he's southpaw he'll switch and then come inside. Sometimes he'll he'll be throwing combinations and he'll throw this rear hand, he'll throw this straight and hop over to this side. And now I'm stuck here in the southpaw. Or if he's starting southpaw, he'll throw the straight and just hop here. And now we've got this great angle. I'm in my orthodox stance and I can still bomb from this side. But it, it is because of that that switch stance. And like you said, Bud tends to just fight you in orthodox or fight you in southpaw and he'll beat you up for a few different rounds. And if he feels like it's not working well. But just come out the next round the opposite stance and yeah. that's that's perfectly valid too because it forces you as as the competitor to be like man i'm starting to figure him out <laughs> you know i'm kind of getting it down and then he comes out in the opposite stance like man it's a completely different fight yeah, now. yeah. so it's it's a great tactic to use i guess the one downside thinking about like um should i should i be training southpaw should i be training the opposite stance is is it am i training like i said you're training against two different fighters but am i now do i have to dedicate twice as much time to orthodox and now I have to spend that amount of time in southpaw. Yes, and I, maybe not double, but that is something to keep in mind. Is like, do you really just hone in on the orthodox and you get really good at that, mm-hmm. or do you or do you switch it up? I think um, you know, as an MMA fighter who's dealing with that, not just with stances but everything. Like, how much should I put into jiu-jitsu? How much should I put into wrestling? How mm-hmm. much should I put into into uh, my boxing or my kickboxing and then how much of the blend should it be uh-huh. i think it really matters fighter to fighter and how you fight how you like to fight does it fit with your style well so if someone like tj obviously it fits his style well yeah but let's say if you're a big heavyweight like you know we're just talk- talking about in the courses we just filmed the black beast yeah he's probably not going to be a great person to be throwing a bunch of switch stance stuff and hopping around switch stance so it really kind of depends fighter to fighter that's a that's a really good point um I'll give you another reason on why I believe that you should train Southpaw and people who come to mind with this are um, Sanchai, um, Lomachenko, guys who can just flow and always seem to be in balance. Um, Whether they're slipping a punch or whether they threw a punch and their opponent moved a certain way. Let's say, I know you just talked about throwing the right hand shifting off to the side now I'm in Southpaw, but what if you're the one throwing the right hand and I go here and I go to this position here, right? Instead of slipping and then doing this rotation and, and getting out of the fight. If I can slip, stay in the fight, 
and I'm comfortable in my set false stance because I practiced it. Or even if it's just that motion, like I, like I said, like we're practicing single techniques or single motions, um, or if you get hit or if you walk backwards, there's going to be times where just like the chaos of the fight, something happens and you're comfortable here, right? Because a lot of times you'll go to Southpaw just because you, you, you try to give them a different look. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you do that? They blitz you, they rush you, no, no, no. they try to call your bluff. And yeah. most of the time it works. You go, all right, I'm going to try to give them a different look. Oh, no, I'm not. Yeah. Let me go back to where I was, where I'm most comfortable because he knows that I'm not 100% confident there. Exactly. That's a great tactic, though, for when someone does switch down. So my coaches yeah. tell me that all the time. With, as soon as they switch, you know, hit them with something. Yeah. A jab, a cross, or, or kick the legs. That's one of the easiest, more mm -hmm. safer ones that you can do nice. when you see a guy switch. And then it also makes that person second guess, like, oh, should I have just switched? Maybe I'm not super comfortable here. Yeah. Unless it is someone who is very proficient, like a Mighty Mouse and Max Holloway. They're, they're going to still be able to fight from there, but... If you see a guy who's not very comfortable, you'll be able to feel that when they fight. Like they switch to southpaw, you hit them with a few things, they immediately switch back, and then you know like you're kind of winning that mental battle against them. Yeah. I think a lot of people tend to overthink it too, like the southpaw advantage. Like everyone's like, yeah, but he's got the southpaw advantage. And then you're like, well, what, what does that mean? And they're like, well, they got the better angles. And I'm like, there's only 360 degrees. It's, it's all the same thing. Yeah. What the southpaw advantage actually is, is just that there's more right-handed people in the world than there are left-handed people, which means you're going to be sparring with more right-handed mm -hmm. orthodox guys. So the southpaws have that advantage because there's less of them, right? They've worked with the orthodox guys more than the orthodox guys have worked with the southpaw guys. They're just harder to find. So when you talk about like open stance stuff, right? It's like every, every um, advantage that you have as a southpaw here, I have too mm -hmm. as an orthodox fighter. People are saying like, you should always be wary of the southpaw's left hand straight. It's the same exact thing as my right hand straight. Yep. You know, like people I think tend to overthink southpaw orthodox and they com completely classify them as two separate fighters, mm -hmm. but it's really just, it's just the angling of my body versus the angle of your body. Absolutely, and like you said, you know, southpaws get to train fighting in that open stance more often than orthodox fighters do. So that's really why oftentimes they're a little bit more proficient or they have the upper hand, Yeah, yeah. but they don't really. The only thing that I would say is different is that, you know, you've got your liver on that side. So right. if we're talking about kicks, you know, it is easier to land this liver kick from this stance here if I got not, not a lot of power here. All right, so there are a couple of reasons on why we believe that you should be training Southpaw, no matter what combat sports. Even Frost Hobby was telling me that I got to watch Princess Bride, and apparently he stands in Southpaw and then switches his stance and tricks him up in that. So uh, even if for no other reason other than to trick your opponent up. But like I said, developing both sides of the body, balance, re-coaching yourself. I think these are a bunch of reasons why you should uh, just be ever-evolving as a fighter. Click the link in the description below. We talked about the Fight Tips courses that are coming out, the forums on fighttips.com. Really big things. We're really excited about it. You guys are going to love it. So for more information, click down below and subscribe to get the Fight Tips before your opponent does. Until then, I'm Shane. Fancy it on Fight Tips for the underdogs.